Hey everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Recap, a guy's review. We are talking Taylor Nolan. This is like the 900th video we've made about Taylor Nolan. So much to unpack, uh, not just my move, but within this story. Uh, if you're new to my channel, hi, how are you? Like I said, I'm just a stand-up comedian living in Los Angeles from Rhode Island. What a charming state Rhode Island is. And um, I've been making some Bachelor-related content. You'll see in the header of my YouTube channel, it says two videos a week. And I said that all proud. But uh, since the pandemic has started about a year ago, I've been making consistent content uh, th about three videos a day. That's what I'm aiming for. Today's going to be four. Uh, after this, I'll be making a video about Claire and Dale. And sh are they official? Does she Is she wearing the Neil Lane ring? And um, Rudy from Listen to Your Heart blasting uh, her man online, deleting the tweet, but we still have it up. But right now, Taylor Nolan, let's jump right into it. People are wondering, will she lose her license? Now, if you guys don't know the story, just go back and watch a few videos. Um, all these tweets from 2012 to 2014, um, maybe even 2015 um, have popped up. She went on The Bachelor in 2016. So um, a lot of tweets popped up of basically her just making fun of everybody. So much hate, a lot of hurtful, just, you know, fat shaming, uh, homophobia. Um, I mean, literally, you just, you, it's, once you see like 10 of them, you're like, all right, I'm done. And then there's like, all right, well, here's 70 more. Hold your Tecate. They're coming. You know what I mean? So um, we've just talked a lot about this and what's going to happen. She's a, registered or a licensed therapist. So the question people are asking is, will she lose her license? Reality, this is on uh, the Bachelor subreddit. Reality Steve says Taylor is aware of the possibility that she could lose her license. Um, here's the comment. I don't think there's a universal answer to holding her accountable. Some people are so offended, they don't even care to hold her accountable. They're done with her, which I guess technically is holding her accountable. If you feel the need to unfollow her, never buy anything she sells, not listen to her podcast anymore, etc., then that's your way of holding her accountable, which is perfectly fine. A lot of people are going to do that. In fact, probably a majority. Whether she keeps her license isn't up to us. If she loses it, she can't say it was unfair. She's aware that's on the table. But if she does lose it, I just don't see the need to cheer or applaud it or rub it in her face, which a lot of people are doing. That's matching hate with hate. If you hated what she did, do all the things I mentioned above and be done with it. That's all people need to do. Okay, so here's here's where this is interesting. Um, you know, call it cancel culture, call it holding people accountable, whatever it may be. The, uh, the mob can come after somebody. They can get rid of your... Um, uh, certain uh, certain uh, sponsorship. You can write to people who are you know sponsors. You can uh, unfollow them. Do all these different things. Whatever you want to do. Uh, in the end, it's like voting with your dollar. You can withhold uh, support. You can do. Uh, people have commented. They're asking. They're sending her Venmo requests for money back since they've donated to her. Whatever it may be. But when it comes to as a therapist, as a licensed therapist, that goes in front of a board. It's different from every state. I don't know too much about it. I've had a ton of clinical therapists. Uh, clinical psychologist um, write in, and I appreciate all your comments. But um, I believe the moral, uh, the ethical code could be different depending on the state. But uh, we'll jump right into that. I mean, if they decide to revoke her license, that's something that that they could, uh, you know, do just because she's uh, talked about clients, their, you know, teeth problems with her clients. She's talked about uh, so much hateful things that how can you po possibly, in good faith, help other people with their issues when you have issues of your own? Now, I'm not going to read the comment, but I got a nice comment from a clinical psychologist in Australia who said it's very fascinating to hear um, us in the Western world deal with uh, these sorts of issues. And basically, basically, this clinical psychologist said that a lot of uh, psychologists, therapists, get into the field because they're trying to, you know, um, understand their own issues. So essentially, you know, you get into it in a lot of cases, because you have problems yourself. And that's why you have that curiosity towards it. I mean, take me for an example. I study the human condition. And as a stand-up comic, almost 90% of my jokes are about human con relationships, my, my relationship with my girlfriend, mine with my family, my, my fiance now, my, my uh, the relationship with my dad. And it's because I'm a codependent. I, I put other people's needs ahead of my own. I, I, I've suffered from love addiction. I've talked about Colton Underwood in his case in so many different ways because I'm, I'm curious. That's what, that's, that's what I'm curious about. So anyhow, I um, saw this article here about therapists whose licenses were revoked just kept practicing as coaches. So this is an issue that could happen in life. In life um, uh, that, you know, there's nothing that's stopping people from spending money on her. She just won't be 
responsible in sort of a licensed way with, uh, you know, licensed through the government, but she could for sure keep on coaching people as a sex coach or whatever it may be. I mean, she went and got her degree at John Hopkins University, which is one of the best colleges in the country. So clearly she's smart, but of course, intelligence um, and compassion are two different things. And you can be very smart and not have compassion or empathy for others. You can be very smart and be very hurtful. You know, you can be very smart and just have a lot of demons in your closet, as we've learned. So it says the 10 therapists interviewed for the study had their licenses uh, disciplined for actions ranging from billing errors to sex with a client. Of those 10, half had their licenses revoked. All 10 were still seeing clients at the time of the study or planning to do so. Those whose licenses had been taken away simply started calling what they do coaching instead. So, you know, it's just, you know... you do whatever you want. You know, plenty of life coaches out there have no license whatsoever, but you expect a therapist, a psychologist, you expect someone with that degree to be an expert in the matter and to be helping people out. I'm not exactly like anti-therapist, but for me, like with my podcast, I do with my fiance, Tasha, it's called The Sap, 431 episodes. With my podcast, that's almost like my type of therapy. Now, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have someone from the outside objectively look in and be like, all right, this is, you're doing this and you're, you're getting defensive here. And it's nice to have that. But at the same time, I feel like most of what is good with therapy is that it just gives you a chance to get things off your chest. And as a comic, as somebody who talks to you guys nonstop, this is kind of my form of, this is like my yoga, you know, bachelor nation is my yoga. Uh, anyway, let's move it along. So I found this out. I, I, I really, um, I'm not one to pry too deep into the stories. I'm really not. I, I'm kind of like the outsider who comments on things that other people have, like sleuthing. I'm not a big sleuther. I'm not doing research to find out this or that. But I did want to know um, if there was any specific code uh, about uh, from uh, Taylor Nolan, like like uh, where, where, where she got her degree from and this and that, and, um, and how she's kind of re- representing herself uh, as a professional. Now, it took me a while to scroll through this website because... I didn't even know if this was the same Taylor because there really is only one photo of her on here, but it is her. So she, uh, let's do this. Um, who, who am I? So we, if we scroll down, we say, obviously it's Taylor Nolan. Okay. We see that it's her hobbies, interest, uh, you know, making fun of people at subway didn't make the cut, but, uh, that was clearly on there volunteering to tweet the hell out of people. You know what I mean? Um, Hiking my way into, okay, I'm just, I'm not gonna do that for everything. Uh, Philosophies on life. Part of the reason I am passionate about being involved in the mental health and counseling field is because it aligns with the things I value most in life, connection and relationships. As social beings, we're reaching out for connection in almost every interaction we have. I'm the type, I'm the type who can be easily duped with apologies. Like I, I expect the best out of people. And the quote that I sort of live by, which I share with, I share with you guys is, is, is just the idea that people are trying the best with the information that they have. So you meet, you might see somebody like Colton Underwood, who on one hand uh, put a tracking device in his uh, ex's car, and, and uh, that's, that's, that's horrible, that's illegal. But then I, but then I, and I believe that. But on the other hand, I look at it and I go, oh, he was so desperate to find answers to things he couldn't possibly know and through jealousy and whatever Puritan culture he had and whatever it was through all of that, I'm, I'm like trying to deconstruct why he did what he did. You know what I mean? And expecting that like, he's not a horrible person. He's still a good guy that did something bad. And I think that's the case with most people. I think most people are good people that do something bad. Now with Taylor Nolan, there's a lot of hateful tweets. So I look at it as a stand up comedian and I go, was she trying to be funny? You know, if you send out a tweet that's like, um, the good thing about, um, she said something like, oh, the good thing about redheaded kids is that um, they don't have to worry about pedophiles coming after them or, or being kidnapped or something like that. And you go, okay, for, yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Now, but if a stand-up comic said that on stage, would it get a laugh? And then it makes you wonder, was Taylor Nolan, and I'm not condoning it, but was she trying to just be this like edgelord tweeter who's like, I'm going to make fun of everything? If it were the case... She just wasn't that funny, okay? Because humor, humor, when it hits, it hits. It shines lights onto, it shines a light onto society. You know, you can tell, tell an edgy joke that picks apart society, and if it hits, it hits because people are absorbing that joke and understand the flaw in the way things work or whatever it might be about. So I'm not defending any of her tweets. I'm just trying to look at it from any sort of like 
angle where there's a benefit of the doubt and it isn't easy. So here she says, she's, you know, she essentially says, I feel strongly that you're not alone in the interpersonal work you do, whether it's the counseling setting, the grocery store, or the doctor's office. I believe we're all in the same fight, no matter who you are. We are all humans. We all struggle and we all rise. A direct, a direct um, opposite opinion you know, from all the hateful tweets that she had, basically pinning everyone, uh, you know, uh, pinning uh, people into in why they suck. <laughs> Every tweet she said was about why people suck, different ways, you know what I mean? All right, so um, services. So she gives her services. I provide individual counseling, which can focus on a variety of issues. In one-on-one -on -one counseling, your voice matters most. It's a safe and special place. I welcome all individuals into this space who are wanting to challenge themselves and reach out for support. So, um, so claim she's welcoming. I've experienced working with the following issues and disorders, anxiety, behavioral, bipolar, codependency, coping, couples, depression. Th this is what's hard to believe when someone's like 23. I don't mean to be ageist, but you learn so much throughout life that I imagine when I was her age, I know she's not 23 anymore, but she was like, but like, imagine getting a degree in, in, in imagine going to a therapist and you see someone who's like Taylor Nolan, who's like 24. She's uh, a therapist and she's supposed to tell you about self-esteem and um, stress. What do you need to, what are you stressed about? You're, you haven't even paid off your student loan debts yet. You know what I mean? You don't have credit cards. What's your deal? We've all got issues we're going through, but um, she's an advocate for the following. She shares all the communities she's an advocate for. Um, sex positive kink allied, sex worker allied, transgender allied, sex positivity, racial justice, queer allied. I mean, basically everything she lists that she's uh, an advocate for is something she made fun of in the past. And again, it's not to say that you can't improve. It's just because she wasn't getting rid of these tweets and because of how uh, tone deaf her apology was, people are asking if she's going to keep her license. I mean, for sure it has to be under review, you would think. You know, she's not like a mechanic who's just fixing, you know, your muffler. She's dealing with the human condition. So someone who can't control her own apology, her own reaction to things, it isn't a good look. Professional background. What do we have here? Education, John Hopkins University. Absolutely. She went to Stevenson University. No idea where that is. She said, I am passionate about educating myself and keeping up on current trends in counseling. I participate in training yearly and acquire continuing education hours, which are required for licensure. I also uh, have not deleted any of my past tweets, so please do not search anything previous to 2016. She left that part out. Um, anyway, so that's who she is. I personally, I, I, look, I don't know if I want her to lose her license. Go back to the comments of other people. This is what other people had said. I don't think she should lose her license out of spite or a sense of revenge. I think she should lose her license due to documented instances over a long period of time that show her blatant lack of professionalism, decorum, and her basic inability to respect her patients. She's not qualified to work in this field, period. Well, and then the question is, who, you know, at what age, you know, I, I've, cause I've said this about Rachel Kirkconnell. I've said this in different instances that just because you think you're mature at 22, you know, it, everyone's at like a different place in their life. So uh, how do we hold everyone accountable? Like at what age do we start holding people accountable? The fact that she was studying to be a therapist, a psychologist is a bad look. Absolutely. When it comes to these tweets, you know, this is why people saw this in a different light than the Rachel Kirkconnell issue. Now, I don't want to compare the two in a sense that to say one's better or worse. They're different. With Rachel Kirkconnell, there's, there's ingrained racism and ignorance. Certainly, there is no anti-racism. No, there was no standing up for what was wrong. There was sort of a complicity, like, I'm going to go to the plantation ball. I'm not going to think twice about it because it doesn't affect me. And that's, an, that's ignorance, right? And then liking someone's photo in front of a Confederate flag, if it was so normalized she didn't notice it, that's ignorance. But with Taylor Nolan studying, actively studying to be a therapist, to help other people out, to... Um, to try to make the world a better place, one person at a time, the tweets aren't a good look. You know, as to respond to my clinical psychologist friend in Australia, I totally, un I totally understand the idea that you get into a certain field because that it affects you personally. Like you get into um, therapy and psychology because of your own inner demons. I totally understand that. I just couldn't imagine the active nature of tweeting. And as as Rachel, as um, uh, what's her name, Taylor Nolan. There's a lot of them out there. As Taylor Nolan, um she basically said like what was said in those tweets was wrong. She did. She like passively didn't take ownership over it. Like I was hurtful. I said these things, these things came out of my brain through Twitter and I hit publish. I hit send. I did this. Um, I don't know. I don't know if she's going to get there. I don't know. You know, there's something that happens. I want to jump forward to um, narcissism. 
not an expert, guys. I've been called a narcissist by my fiance and by ex-girlfriends, right? Every guy out there has been called a narcissist, right? You're going to fight your narcissist. You're gaslighting. I, maybe I am. I don't know. I'm learning. I'm trying, okay? Maybe I'm gaslighting you guys right now. I still don't know what the term is. It's been used in so many different ways. If I could just get an actual definition, please let me know. But anyway, folks, and I'm not saying that to make light of any of it. I'm just saying we're all learning. Well, I've learned so much this week. The thing is, though, I don't claim to be uh, like a therapist or a psychologist that's doing better in the world. I'm just, uh, you know, in, a, in my new, uh, my new uh, house over here just trying to talk to you guys in front of a green screen. We're having a discussion, folks. So anyhow, um, it's interesting because when it comes to narcissism, it's when you, when you have an IQ, a high IQ. And I'm not saying that Taylor Nolan does, but she went to a very good school. John Hopkins University is one of the best schools in the country. When you operate from a place of superiority it's very hard to accept that you've done something wrong, right? That must be very hard for her. So I was reading this article here um, about uh, narcissism in, in people with high IQ. And again, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm assuming she's smart. We assume she's smart. She's got some good degrees there. The researchers surmise that grandiose narcissists view intelligence as an integral part of their self-concept, which explains why they place such high importance on IQ testing. They conclude individuals with high grandiose narcissism maintain unrealistically positive self-views with regard to intelligence. They feel that high intelligence is a resource that buys people benefits in multiple domains, and they feel that they possess that resource. Thus, people scoring high on grandiose narcissism are indeed preoccupied with this topic of intelligence. Guys, I didn't think today I'd wake up and be talking about grandiose narcissism. I didn't think so at all. But um, it's an interesting thought because this all stems back. The first time we saw Taylor Nolan's True Colors was when she was... Um, uh, Therasplaining, that's a new word I just made. If you've watched this far in the article, hashtag Therasplaining. And uh, <laughs> please, I in the video, uh, I like it when people uh, do their homework and they leave a comment so I know that you made it uh, 16 minutes in. But if she's Therasplaining herself to Corinne, it shows that she thinks she's uh, smarter than because of uh, a degree she has uh, attached to her name. So we'll have to see how that all works out and whether or not she will keep her license. I am one that does not dance on somebody's grave. Um, I think like I've been preaching in other circumstances, the best thing that can happen from this is that she learns her lessons uh, and learns some humility and does good with what has happened. Whether or not you decide to continue Venmoing her or supporting her podcast, that's up to you guys. Everyone decides how to vote with their dollar and to vote with their time and, and all that jazz. So we'll have to see how it goes. We'll see what her next statements are. Like I said, I've got some other videos coming up. Rudy from Listen to Your Heart. It'll be a little bit of a lighter video uh, than all this. Um, I want to talk about apology bombing. We'll talk about how a lot of people are uh, sort of forcing former contestants of Bachelor Nation to apologize and take a stance and, and uh, how that, what that really means when it comes to uh, uh, being authentic and, uh, and whether or not people are genuine with their responses. And also Claire Crowley, uh, she's wearing her rock again, the big Neil Lane, you know, that, that leathery man with his big old four carat rings. Nothing pisses off, nothing pisses us guys off when we're diamond shopping. And then our, our girlfriends are watching Neil Lane just pop out a four carat. Like, boy, that just, uh, you know, Increase the price tag on my ring. Anyway, so I want to share this now that we're at the end with you guys. Uh, tried something different today, and I released uh, this week's episode of my podcast um, and a video version of it on the Patreon. If you want to listen to the podcast, it's always free on all podcast apps. Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, iTunes, uh, Apple, whatever, wherever you listen to your podcast, um, you can search the SAP. It's short, it's short for Sex Actually podcast. We talk about dating and relationships, not just Bachelor stuff. My fiance and I co-host it. We interview other comedians about their lives. It's fun. It's casual. Uh, this episode we recorded in my backyard. Brand new. Just moved in, so don't judge me that we don't have much set up here. I'll play you 10 seconds, and then um, we'll get out of here. So here's 10 seconds. If you want to watch the private version, it's on Patreon. The lowest tier level is $5 a month. You can sign up. You can cancel at any time. It's just there as a way for um, us to kind of finance what we do. We heard our neighbors having sex yesterday for long. I mean, I don't want to say hours, but they were having sex. Why do you keep taking your headphones off? To check and see if you're not being okay, too loud. I'm not being too loud, <laughs> so keep yeah, your headphones on or I'll start yelling. This freaking chick over here, guys, is your bat shit. Freaking. <laughs> You're like, yeah, well, I don't know. I'm trying to not swear as much. Their neighbors were just, I mean, 
this chick was getting plowed. So it's a whole story that we heard our neighbors having sex. We just moved in. So we're still new to the neighborhood. We don't know if they're shooting a porn, if it was just that time. You know, who knows what was going on. But anyway, that's a sneak peek. If anyone wants to go over there and support it, go to patreon.com slash this app, patreon.com slash T-H-E-S-A-P, a link in the description. Either way, thank you guys so much for listening to me. To me. Thera explained to all of you. More videos coming. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye now.